Hello my friends and welcome to Paulina Art. Today I'm going to be painting this pretty landscape, the first painting of 2022 that I have named New Year, New Hopes. This is a beautiful road with a gazebo with some roses surrounding the path. I feel this is very suiting for a new year with an unknown path and lots of hopes for the new year. This painting is inspired by this photo I found on Pixabay. Pixabay is a website that has lots of beautiful photos that you can download for free. I often go into Pixabay just to get ideas and inspiration. Like I mentioned earlier, this is the first painting of 2022. I haven't painted for about three weeks. I got very, very sick before Christmas and I miss Christmas and New Year's and I am just starting to feel better now. Thanks to God, it was not the virus. It was just a nasty cold, but I'm getting much better. And for this painting, the first painting of 2022, I wanted to share it with you. This is a very easy, beginner friendly painting. I'm going to show you step by step how to sketch the landscape and how to paint this beautiful gazebo full of roses. For this painting, I'm using two different kinds of sponges, but if you don't have them, you can use your brush or a brush like this one. If you would like to see how I created this pretty landscape, new year, new hopes, stay with me and let's paint together. Today I'm working with the Montmartre acrylic paint. I'm going to link above the reviews I've done for this acrylic set. The colors that I'm using today are lamp black, titanium white, medium yellow, yellow ochre, taylor green, sap green, brilliant red, and burnt amber or brown. Of course, you can use similar colors that you have at home. Today, I'm working on 11 by 14 canvas board, which I have toned with white gesso and a couple of drops of medium yellow, which is the yellow I'm going to be using for this painting. Now, this is my reference photo. And to sketch this onto my surface, I'm going to divide with white chalk the photo in the center here and again here. So this gives me four equal quadrants and it's gonna be much easier for me to transfer this idea onto my canvas. I'm going to go ahead and divide my canvas, my canvas board the same way. And again this way. Okay, I'm gonna to move to gray. You might be able to see it a little bit better. So I'm dividing it in the center here and again here. Approximately. When I look at the reference photo, I see that the road takes part of these two quadrants and it turns this way. Now this is just for reference doesn't have to be exactly. So my road will turn here somewhere and it comes around and this way. The nice thing with the chalk, if you're not happy, you can erase and do it again. So I'm gonna get rid of some of the marks that I don't need 
just want my row here. And this is going to be the lightest, the lightest area. And the light is coming from, from this way, as I see on the reference photo. These are just guidelines, so my painting will look with depth. I'm going to start by painting the road, and I'm going to use a filbert brush. I'm going to pick up some white with a tiny drop of black and a tiny drop of the Taylor Green. This is the, the color I want. And I'm going to go ahead and paint the road. And I'm following the shape of the road with the brush. The road opens up here and becomes thinner on the distance. And I'm going to use the same colors, just intensified a little bit more to do the side here where the grass and that is going to be. My strokes are going this way just to show the difference of the surface. Just added more green and black to this color to differentiate from the own. This is just my underpainting at the moment, so I can place the different elements of the painting, of the composition. All right, the road has been established. Now this is going to be the lightest section of the painting. And I'm going to use a damp sponge to create the light in here. But I'm going to remove some of this gray with a dry brush because I don't want this, this gray chalk mixing with my colors at the top. I want it nice and bright. With the damp sponge, I'm going to pick up the white first, and I'm going to add just a drop of yellow on a nice pale color, lighter than this. I'm going to create the background in this area. Just softly moving the sponge. And I can intensify the yellow a little bit in some areas at the top here. Just at the top and then blend with the clean side of the sponge. So everything is nice and blended. I can add more white if I want it a little bit lighter. And blend. I'm going to be using the same sponge to create the foliage out here. And this area is going to be the lightest green, and the green is going to get darker as we get to the front of the painting. Okay, I'm going to create a pale green, starting with white. I'm going to add some yellow. And a drop of the sap green. What a nice pale yellowy green like this. And I want to see if this is the color I want. 
I'm going to leave a little bit of an opening here so we can see some of the light. I'm going to add some in the back here. dubbing the sponge and it is quite light but this is what I want to to start with and I'm adding some on this darker area okay I've intensified the color just by adding more green and yellow and again I'm going to dab on some areas I still want the to see the light and I have white I want to add a little bit of white in here just to bring even more brightness to this area okay I'm going to allow all of this to dry for a few minutes Okay, this is a little bit dry. I want to start adding some depth to the painting. So I'm going to pick up the chalk again, and I'm going to start doing, marking the areas where I want some depth, and starting to create a bit of the shape of the gazebo without doing the beams just yet. So at this corner, I'm going to draw a line that is going to fold in here and uh, another one is going to fold in here and in here this is just shaping creating a bit of the gazebo shape And this is going to help me where I need to put my my dark colors. Now your gazebo can be more of a rounder shape or the straight beams, whatever you prefer. Okay, so there are some guiding lines and I can use the same sponge or I can use a brush like this one if you don't have a sponge like this you can use a brush like this with short bristles for the whole painting I'm going to try this to add the some of these darker areas and I'm going to use the the green and just darkening my original mixture this is not going to be the darkest green just yet and this brush you have to press down like this be rough with it to create the foliage this is um one of the brushes from a donna dewberry set i'm going to start just by by dabbing around here on the road got too much paint on the brush and just start creating some of the the foliage following the the lines that I that I did it's gonna be a loose a loose painting We're going to add some depth here on the side of the road and the branches get thicker in this area thinner in here and they get thicker up here and again I'm following I'm following the lines I did with chalk creating the effect of of the gazebo 
can move the brush this way, create some different effects. And again, this ones will, because they are closer, will be a little bit, a little bit thicker. Don't put too much water in this brush. In fact, it's better if there's only paint. I'm adding some in here on the side of the road. And I'm going to add some more, more foliage in here where, where I see I need it. And I'm adding some of the lighter greens in here too. I'm playing with the green colors. Okay, I'm going to add more foliage here. So there's more foliage at the bottom where the, the rose bushes have more strength. Okay, so I'm happy the way it's looking. Now make sure you rinse all your brushes and sponges after every layer of paint. Okay, I'm going to start drawing the beams with the gray chalk. These are gonna be the gazebo beams. You don't have to add them if you don't want to, but I think they add to the painting. And again, I want this to be nice and loose. So I'm just gonna draw these lines. The gazebo beams are going to be thinner at the back. And larger as they come to the size of the painting. I'm going to draw the lines here. I'm just going to do mine square. You can do your um, rounder if you prefer. And these ones get lost on the horizon. I'm going to do another beam up here. I'm going to do a beam coming down here. This one is going to be a thicker beam. We can do some beams coming across. It doesn't really matter because it's all going to be covered with um, flowers. Just make sure they get thicker as you come down. And they don't have to be perfect beams because they look more painterly and realistic if they are not perfect. Okay, okay my friends. I'm going to mix the color for the beans and I'm going to use an angled brush. I'll see how that works. Okay, for the beans I'm going to use white with brown and a drop of black. Let's see how this color looks. Okay, I have the color on my angle brush and I want these beams to be lighter and again they'll get darker as they come to the outer sides of the canvas of the painting. Okay, I'm going to start just by doing the lines like this. These are my beams. I can always lighten them up, which I will this ones. And again, don't worry if they're not perfect because there'll be a lot of vegetation on them. And I'm thickening them a bit as they come down here. I'm adding a bit of an angle here so it looks more rounded. The gazebo starts taking more shape. And 
I'm making these ones thicker. See how much thicker than these ones are. And we can add more, more lines like this on the gazebo. The light is coming from this way. So I'm going to pick up some white and mix with the brown that I did. I want a lighter version of this brown. Much, much lighter. I'm going to add some highlight to the ones that are further out. doing it on this side only I can add some up here too and on this side on this ones to create um, the effect of wood and I have white white is just going to be on this this ones far away on the distance these are the lightest one some of the brown and I'm going to add some of the brown on this side and on this side just to create dimension and at the bottom of some of the beams because the light is hitting on top if you hear some snores that's my cat she gets very relaxed when I paint. Okay, okay, this is looking pretty. Let's add some shadow and light to the road just to make it look interesting. And I'm going to use a small Felbert brush. And I'm going to use the same colors I used for the road, which were white, a drop of black, and some Taylor Green. This is um, going to be for the shadows. And we said the light is coming this way. So there's going to be a lot of light here. And uh, we're going to add some shadows first. Let's see if this color works. And. Uh, I'm just going to do the shadows like this, going across the road. You can use a, a flat brush too, if you prefer. This is um, creating all the shadows, the road and the, the wooden beams are casting. I like to try different um, brushes when I'm painting and see and see how they work for me. Try to keep them across so the road doesn't look too strange. There's a lot of um, lot of vegetation that is casting the shadow in here. I'm going to start adding the light that is coming through this area. And again, it's going to be pretty much the same as, as the shadows. I don't want to cover the shadows. I want to leave them. Again, I'm going um, across to create the 
effect of, um, of the road. And it just went white in here to convey lots of light. And of course, I look at my reference photo every now and then and, and see if I'm on the right track or if I'm doing the changes that I want to do. But the shadow and light are important that you pay attention to that. I'm going to add more light in this area, more white in here. I'm going to add a little bit more shadows in here. Painting is all about shadow, shadow and light, just to create the dimension that you want. I'm going to move to a fine liner brush to create all the all the rose vines and branches and I have brown I'm going to start with the brown and I'm adding lots of water to my brown color this will help me create all the nice vines and in here they're going to be nice and thin and they will get thicker in this area and I added a drop of white because I felt it was too dark And you can be as creative with your vines as you want, as artistic as you want. You don't want them too thick, nice and thin. To make them nice and thin, you need lots, lots of water on the brush. They come closer they can get darker just with the with the brown I'm just gonna use brown on this ones and see if it's dark enough and they will get a little bit thicker these vines they can come up to to the beams and twist and turn. And the vines that are closer to this area, I'm adding a drop of black in there, very little black, just to make the brown even darker and give the painting more, more perspective. And they, they get thicker too here, the branches. And they twist and turn and dance in a beautiful way. You can let your brush guide you and do what it wants to do. I'm going to go back to the brown in here. Don't forget the, the beams at the top. I'm going to start using the, the the brown with black in here. Just make these ones darker. I 
definitely can fill up areas if I feel they need more. And I have some brown with a little bit of white. And I want to start doing some, uh, some shadowing in here and vegetation. Some leaves on the road maybe. Mm -hmm, to be a little bit lighter in here. Adding more white. Okay, with the same brush, I have sap green. And I'm going to start adding more foliage on this painting. This is just the sap green now. And this is going to add um this is going to add a lot of life to the painting, adding more foliage. Dimension. I don't want to cover all the beams, but I do want to cover some of it, especially around the bottom here, where the vines start. Want to cover some of these vines and some of the beams. You can use uh, the brush or the sponge, whatever you prefer. But I'm experimenting with this brush now, and I kind of like it. I want some nice effect of leaves here, hanging down towards, towards the path. And a lot up here, creating some shadow, and just dabbing the brush. That's all I'm doing, you guys very easy the key is not to overload the brush with paint and to go slowly and see where you want this this greenery to go and i still want to create that gazebo effect as i'm applying the green that the everything is going this way creating that pretty shading, gazebo, roundness effect. I'm going to add some at the top here. I don't want the top really bare. Okay, I've added some white and yellow to this uh, green. And I'm just going to add a little bit of highlights. Just to add more dimension to the painting. Again, I don't want to overload the painting with light. I still want to keep this darker effect on the sides. So it's it's um it's a game of light and shadow. I'm going to use this large porous sponge now. And I have dampened the sponge and dried it a bit with a paper towel. And I'm going to add the darkest colors with the Taylor Green. I'm just going to add some on the outer parts of the painting to incorporate the Taylor Green I use in here. And I'm going to add it just um, on the parameters here of the painting. And in this area as well. just to give the painting um, some dimension and incorporate the colors. Framing, framing the gazebo. If you don't have this sponge, you can, you can use your, the brush. I'm going to add some at the bottom here. It doesn't look so bare. We 
can leave it as is or add some roses, which I'm going to do. But I'm going to give this a chance to dry for a few minutes. Okay, I took a little break and now everything is dry and I can look at the painting and see if I'm happy with the composition and see if I need anything else, but I'm going to leave it. I don't want to overwork this painting. And what I'm going to do now is I'm going to add the roses. My reference photo has some beautiful roses all over the gazebo path. So I'm going to go ahead and add some of the red, yellow, and pink roses that I see. And I'm going to use a small round brush. And I'm going to do here yellow and yellow and red and some pink up here. So I'm going to start with yellow ochre because this is a very opaque color. It's going to cover all of the green. So I'm going to start adding the roses just by, just by dabbing the brush like this, creating a bit of the effect. Now these roses cannot be super large, otherwise the, the painting is going to look out of proportion. And I want different sizes, some smaller and some larger. I'm just dabbing the brush, creating um, a bit of a oval shape, but jaggedy with the petals of the roses. And they can be larger on this side of the canvas because they're closer to us. And I'm going to pick up the red that I'm using and all this area is going to be the red roses. And these are get, going to become a little bit smaller because they're further away. And some are hanging towards, towards the road like this. Okay, I'm going to mix the yellow ochre with some red. These are going to be the, the pink roses. And they're going to be up in this area. There's going to be some larger ones that are closer to us and some smaller ones. Okay, I think this looks good. I don't want to overload the painting. And I'm going to define the roses a little bit. And I'm going to use a small angle brush for that. And I'm going to start with the yellow roses. I'm going to pick up white at the toe of the brush and yellow at the heel. And I'm going to blend these two colors I'm not going to over blend, but just, um, just blend a bit like this. I don't have any medium on the brush. I want this to be very soft. And I'm going to uh, add some, a little dimension to the roses. Just like that. fancy. I'm just moving the brush and creating the illusion of some petals. And I can add more yellow if I want a brighter yellow. I want this to be very easy and loose. And I'm 
doing like a circular shape to create the effect of the roses and they can go on in different directions this one's just a little little touch and I'm going to move to an even smaller angle brush and this is going to be for the red roses I have the white at the toe just a dab, tiny bit and right at the heel and I'm just going to give them a bit of a shape like this nothing too too detailed just a few strokes just adding some on the back here some lighter ones and for the peach ones I'm going to pick up white and red and some of the yellow ochre and I'm going to do these ones the same way just a few petals to convey the effect that they are roses and I can add more yellow to some of them just to uh, so they're not all the same And I'm going to add some lighter ones here with a flat brush, a small flat brush. I'm going to add some leaves. I'm going to pick up the light green on one corner and the dark sub green on the other. I'm going to, to blend a bit. And I'm going to add some small leaves around the roses just by pressing with a darker color towards the branch and the lighter towards the outside. And I'm going to add lots of leaves like this. Some of them can be just dark. They show more. And some can be light. I'm going to add some lighter leaves in here. So they show more. Some hanging towards towards the road okay the roses are done the leaves are done and to finish the painting I have some brown and black on the fine liner brush and lots of water to make it inky and I'm just going to to connect some of these roses So they are not just flying like this. Just doing some uh, vines and branches. Just to connect them somehow. This has to be very subtle, of course. You can have some branches leaning on the road. whatever makes you happy okay my friends our painting 
new year, new hopes is done. I'm going to give you a close up. I hope you enjoy this video. I hope you learn something new. If you like this video, please give it a like, comment below, share with your friends, and subscribe to my channel if you don't want to miss any future content from me. I wish you a happy new year and I wish for you to be very creative. I hope you do this painting with me as well. Thank you so much for watching. I will see you on the next one.